today we will be reviewing the CI2 quiz paper for digital electronic circuits. So it was a paper which was very moderate to high level uh, tasks were there to complete. So let's see how uh, and how to solve all the questions. So first question was fairly simple. An SR latch is a what was the issue there? So let us see the options as combination circuit, synchronous sequential circuit, one bit memory element or one clock delay element. So first of all, we know in digital electronics, we will be having basically circuits which are called as combinational circuits and sequential so combinational circuits are those circuits where the output always depends on only the present input whereas in the sequential circuit combination uh, I mean in a sequential circuit the output does not only always depend on the input but also will depend on the past outputs that is what we know so since SR latch if you remember SR latch figure it is just two NOR gates Since the outputs at this point is not only dependent on the input but also on the previous output, so it is this Q, this output is always dependent on the present input and the previous output. What I had here. So that's why this or this circuit circuits are called as sequential circuits. If I had a gate something like this A B and Y. This is a combinational circuit because the output over here is always and always dependent on the present input. We don't have any past states that is coming and joining here. So it is not at all a combinational circuit. So first option is gone. So second option is synchronous sequential circuits. Yes, we know now it is a sequential circuit. When do we think of synchronous? When I have a clock fed to a latch or a flip flop that is called synchronous since in a latch I don't have any any clock being given this is not a synchronous sequential circuit is it a one clock delay again we know no clock is not at all an issue for this particular SR latch and obviously it should be a one bit memory element because once I feed a data it might be RS or any other values between 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 it will be taking that corresponding values for Q so if I have 0, 0 at R and S Q will be the same as the previous Q value so it will be previous Q if it was 0 1 then it would be resetting 
so if q was 0 or q was 1 the previous value it will be always resetted to 0 if r and s is i mean if s and r we are talking now with respect to sr if s and r is 1 then the output will be 1 no matter whatever the previous q was it might be 0 or it might be 1 the output remains at 1 so if you see this it is storing one bit of data at any given point of time hence one bit memory element is the answer for question one okay see you later so let's see question two consider a circuit uh, in the circuit a race around condition occurs at you know the circuit this circuit is nothing but what if you just see this this is an SR circuit so in SR I have four states race around when will I have race around when s and r is 0 0 my output is no change that means q and q bar remains same when s and r is 0 and 1 no matter what was my q it resets to 0 the previous q might be 0 or the previous q might be 1 the next state changes to 0 if s and r is 1 0 no matter whatever my previous q value is the next output will be set and q complement is a complement of q and when 1 1 it is indeterminate or you can't determine hence race around condition does not does not occur in my sr latch that should be the answer because race around is the one where the change in the output causes the change in the input and this changes the output again so your output and input keeps on changing fluctuating so this race around condition is only and only a process in jk flip flop to overcome this we went for master slave arrangement you should be knowing all these concepts so this was the answer for question 2 so let's see with the next question so this was uh, again uh, a bit higher level question that means it was put uh, you you should have uh, given some thought on this so basically we have a comparator and a flip flop circuit so this is a comparator and this is a logical comparator you should be knowing what a comparator does basically a comparator compares the inputs given and it will give an output so if i say this is a inverting and this is a non-inverting terminal let us consider this is v1 and this is v2 and this is my output v output when will my output v out p1 the output v out will be 1 and this they have already symbolized that that this inverter is going to stay between 0 or 1 this is what it states if it is represented by 0 or 1 this line dash line this represent this is either 0 or 1 depending on the input so what happens to my output when the inputs are such and such when will my output be 1 first of all the output will be 1 when I have V2 greater than V1 that is the voltage at the non-inverting terminal is greater than the voltage at the inverting terminal then my output will be 1 if V2 is less than V1 then the output is 0 simple this is the concept of inverting non-inverting terminal concept 
So if you keep this particular logic in mind, then you can simply solve for this particular cases. So let us take for case one, then vi equal to two volts, which is minus two volts. Okay. So vi equal to minus two volts is vi is here. Vi is minus two volts. Now at the top, I'll write. At the top, if we see minus two is compared with plus two, so plus two is greater than minus two, so V two is less than V one. Hence, the output of a top comparator will be zero, and minus two is fed to the bottom flip flop. I mean, bottom comparator. So minus two and minus one is minus one greater than minus two. Yes, it's greater than minus two. Hence, the bottom flip flop will be giving. I mean, bottom comparator will be giving a value one. Hence, the value at this point will be zero and one. So, if it is zero and one, what kind of circuit is this? If you just just want to see this particular part in your circuit. See this. This is nothing but again an SR flip flop, right? So when you have zero and one as the input to the flip flop, where this is R input, okay. Where this is value R, and this is value S, is what we call when R. Is zero and S is equal to one. This is nothing but reset state. So we know now zero 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 one one zero and one one S R. So this is okay, sorry. So if I see this, this should be Q the next state. So if I have S and R equal to zero, this is no change. And if S equal to zero, R equal to one. It is reset. If S equal to one, R equal to zero. It is set. And one one is undefined. So this is been this reset, set, and no change are always and always keep this in mind. It is we speak this terms with respect to Q. If Q becomes zero, it is reset. If Q becomes one. So always and always keeping in mind the state of flip flop with respect to Q, we speak set and reset terms. Okay, now coming to this particular thing. First thing is ruled out, so this is not the answer. So let next take for V I equal to plus three. So now V I equal to plus 3 what happens if v i equal to plus 3 plus 3 is it greater than plus 2 yes hence the top comparator will be giving me 1 and is minus 1 greater than plus 3 no hence the bottom comparator will be giving 0 if you see this now again r is at 1 s is at 0 hence output resets that is q becomes 0 so q becomes 0 hence the answer is p is equal to 0 yes p is equal to 0 so this is an answer but what was the thing we have given note more than one option might be correct All right so we should check for the remaining two also so let's go for the next Value that is what if if I have V I equal to zero. Okay. So if V I equal to zero, uh, we have to see this particular value. When V I equal to zero, is zero greater than two volts? No, not at all. Hence the top 
uh, comparator will be giving me zero value at the output and the bottom comparator is minus one greater than zero no not at all hence the bottom comparator will also be giving me zero as output when you have zero zero at your s and r the value at the output is no change no change means to say your output might be zero or output might be one but in this option why the output might be zero or not output might be one that is the thing because my previous state of q might be zero or might be one i don't know since when both zero and zero is at the sr flip flop it is called as no change so it might be if the previous state was at zero the next state will also be at zero if the previous state was at one the next state will also be at one hence the third option is ruled out because p is equal to zero always is what they have given so this is ruled out and the fourth option is the only option which is right so we have two option for this the answers are b and d it might be b or it might be d so b and d is the right options for ci3 uh, that is ci2 third question so let's go for the fourth So in the fourth question, which one of the following statement is true about this digital circuit that we have given? So, okay, in this question, basically we have three flip flops, and the three flip flops are uh, connected in this fashion. And you can see F in is the clock what I'm feeding. So some frequency F is being fed to this clock, and this clock is synchronous in nature because all the three flip flops are fed with the same clock so synchronous this is a synchronous circuit because all the three flip flops will be getting excited at the same clock pulse that should be kept in mind and the first second third if you take if you name them the two and three's output that is q2 and q3 is being handed and being fed back to the first flip flop hence how this flip flop might work if if this flip flop is going to work how it is going to work so let us take those states q1 q2 q3 okay let us take the states and let us start with some random state as an option so i'll take some random state 101 is what the first state it would be at so what happens 0 and 1 is being fed back as an AND gate and it is being fed to the D as input so at every clock pulse the data will be fed to my first flip flop okay so let's see what happens 1 and 0 is what it's 0 right 1 and 0 becomes 0 that is inverted so 1 is output so 1 is what is being fed at the first flip flop and the first flip flop data will be fed at the second flip flop that is this and zero will be shifted so this is what happens the first this and this will be getting NAND that and the output is fed to the d1 or the first flip flop so this is the output and this particular value will be getting shifted so this is something like a shift register and what happens for the next state in the next state again you can see q2 and q3 are the data 1 and 0 1 and 0 is 1 1 and 0 is 1 so if you have confusion just take nand gates output and then think of doing it okay i should not i will not if i give q then i think probably it will be a confusion so 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 1 0 and 1 1 so let us take the states NAND as 0 0 when both the inputs are a 0 and 0 the output is 1 when 0 1 the output is 1 1 0 the output is 1 and when both the inputs are 1 and 1 the output becomes 0 this is a truth table for a NAND gate okay so keeping this in mind you should be doing this so when 1 and 0 is the output of q2 and q3 that is being NANDed and fed back to d2 at the next clock pulse so at the next clock pulse if this was at the first clock pulse at the second clock pulse 
the data one will be fed to the Q1 and this one will be shifted to the Q2 and Q2 will be shifted to Q3. And now you can see at the next state when the next clock pulse enters the data D that is coming at the first flip flop will be 1 and 1. 1 and 1 becomes what? 0. So 0 will be fed at the Q1 and this one will be shifted to the right. Again at the third or the fourth clock pulse 1 and 1 0 will be fed at the first flip flop. This 0 is going to be shifted to the next flip-flop that is 2 q2 and this one will be shifted to q3 again at the application of the next clock pulse 0 and 1 is what i have at the flip-flops input so 0 1 corresponds to 1 1 will be fed to the flip-flop 1 and this two zeros will be shifted across again when i have two inputs as 0 and 0 0 and 0 can think of this 0 and 0 is nothing but 1 again 1 is being fed at q1 this one gets shifted and this 0 gets shifted so if i keep on writing this table so let's see the table so the next clock pulse i have uh, 1 1 1 and the next clock pulse it is 1 and 1 is 0 1 1 next clock pulse it is again 0 0 1 and the next clock pulse it is again 1 0 0 and the next clock pulse it is 1 1 0 so if you see this you can think of a sequence being repeated so forget about the initial step what we started with so you can just neglect it so this if i see this as a first stage 1 1 0 you can see 1 1 0 starts again somewhere here okay again 1 1 0 is getting started somewhere here so and the steps in between is repeated 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 so if you if you see the last q3 because we have asked for f out what is the frequency of f out if you see this so I'll, I'll just try to draw a timing diagram for this okay so 0 triple 1 so let me call this as 1 timestamp 2 time 3 time so this is 1 bit period this is 2 bit period 3 bit period 4 5 6 7 8 9 so this is how the time bit period defined as so the first bit is 0 the next three bits are 1 1 1 if you see this three values again the fourth value is 0 so at this point it becomes 0 the fifth value is 0 and the sixth value is 1 1 1 again 1 1 1 again it goes to 0 again you have two more zeros coming there so if you see this particular uh, timing diagram, I will also represent the clock pulse. So the clock pulse will be something like this. For every bit you have, okay, I will call it eight bit. Like this. So in every duration, I have one clock pulse being given. So one, two. Let me take this timestamps so that I can draw proper graph. Okay, so the clock pulse now. So first clock pulse here, second clock pulse here. I think the clock pulse is having equal duty cycle. So, 
so if you see this now if you if you uh, think of this data so let we started from zero so zero to zero was one particular cycle if i think like that okay this particular frequency of clock pulse is repeated so this is also a clock pulse you have a high state and a low state going okay so this is also a clock pulse so how is this clock being divided over here is the question so if you see that question if you just keep that question in mind then you can see one two three four five so you have five clock pulses for every five clock pulses you have one clock pulse being generated it might be a positive edge or a negative edge so one pulse is generated for every five pulse hence if you feed five clock pulses for this you can generate one pulse at the output so this is uh, dividing the input frequency by five okay so this is a divide by five circuit so i hope this particular question is clear so hope so if you have any doubts or queries just ask me comment below we'll solve it okay and the last question fifth question and it is very fairly easiest one i guess only thing is you should be knowing the concept we are given two flip flops that is jk flip flop and it is operating in toggle mode because both jk are shorted so it is a toggle flip flop and we have already told that the flip flop is already having zero and zero at the output okay zero and zero at the output because we have already told the system has zero and zero it is stored storing zero zero means qa will be at zero qb will be at zero that is what we mean to say and we have we have also told that assume that the clock rise time is much smaller than the delay of the jk flip flop that means if i feed a clock the clock rise time takes some time to reach the first flip flop and some more time to reach the second flip flop so there will be a delay so that this delay might hamper upon the output but here we are told the rise times are very less okay it is very very less that means if i give a clock pulse to this particular jk flip flop so let us take this as positive trigger clock pulse okay at this clock pulse what was the value that was available at this particular jk and what was the value that was available at this particular jk will be taken into consideration and your qa and qb will be set according to that so if you consider that the first flip flop is having one at the input so that means whenever you have a t flip flops one so if you see this particular thing whenever t is at 1 uh, t is at 0 it is no change state and whenever t is at 1 it is toggle so this is the condition what we have for toggle flip flop hence toggle means to say it will be q complement if q was at 0 it will be 1 if q was at 1 it will be at 0 so it is q complement toggle means so that means to say that what kind of uh, output is been expected here is at a clock pulse you don't have delay between the flip flops so both the flip flops will be getting excited at the same time so getting excited at the same time means to say this flip flop will be storing a value with respect to jk jk is given with 1 and 1 hence the previous value of the first flip flop was 0 hence this will be having value 1 so the first flip flop will be having value 1 and the second flip flop if you consider this 1 then you are gone wrong because 1 is not at all been considered because both the flip flop are excited at the same instant so same instant means to say this will be having a value 1 1 because it is toggling and this will also be toggling for the previous value of this so previous value of this was been fed as 1 because this was zero previously and this flip flop will also be toggled hence this flip flop will also be storing one hence both the flip flop will be having a value 1 1 and that is the right answer 
this happen because we have specified that the rise time is much smaller than the delay of the JK flip flop. Delay of the JK flip flop means once I feed this, there should be a change and because you know there is logic gates within and there will be a delay and this delay causes an output delay and this output delay if this rise time was having more delay then you could have expected this to be at zero because first state output was set at one at this point so this might be zero and there might be no change since we have already spoken about this rise time is much smaller than the delay of the JK flip flop both the clock pulses will be exciting at the same instant of time and the output here is considered or the input of this is the output of the previous state that is before the first flip flop getting triggered so that means to say it will be at zero i mean the output of first flip flop was zero so q a bar is what is fed for j k and q a bar is nothing but one according to the first state's output hence one means toggle condition both flip-flop will be at one and one hope that uh, your doubts are clear so if you have any issues and queries please comment and let me know i'll try to solve it so thank you cheers for the day